Kote, this is Dr. Nick coming to you from the comedy club at Melrose Arc in Igoli, the city of gold, aka Johannesburg. And I love this place because I honestly believe life is a stage. Now, if you look behind me, you can see the stage. This is where Comedy Central performs when they are in Johannesburg and when Trevor Noah is in Johannesburg. And when I say life is a stage, I believe you have to remember that you perform in front of an audience. You never perform for yourself, you perform for an audience, which means you have to understand your audience, you have to understand what is it they want, you have to connect with the audience deeply, you have to establish that real connection, and you have to move your audience, you have to move them emotionally, and you have to make them laugh. Um, so ultimately what you want, you want your audience to love you, and this is really what the series is all about. And what prompted this video, which is obviously about how can you become more charming, is an experience I had yesterday when I had a haircut and somebody, I sent them my picture and she remarked that you're looking very charming. So as a researcher, I always want to go to the bottom of a statement or the bottom of uh, uh, motivation and understand what is it that makes people more charming. And I'm going to share with you three elements about charm. First of all, what is charm and where does this word charm come from? Secondly, are we born charming or mates? And thirdly, what are the top 10 traits of charming leaders? And how can you become a more charming person? So the word charm comes actually from the Greek word charisma. Charisma means uh, a gift of grace, a favor freely given. And the ancient Greeks believed that gods and goddesses represented the most precious qualities of the human being. One of them being Charis, the goddess of grace, and she represented this grace. She represented the favor freely given. And what it means is that you make people feel better. You become fascinating in their life. They will find you fascinating and they are attracted to you. Now remember in all your interactions with others, there's three responses you can elicit, you do elicit. E either first you attract somebody to you, or second you repel them, or third you leave them indifferent. Now let's talk about charm. Are uh, charming people born or made? And when I think about a charming person, I typically think about George Clooney, who probably might have been born charming. But this is the greatest lie and the furthest away from the truth because charm is very much like beauty in the eye of the beholder. You can come across charming to one person and the very next minute uh, not charming at all to the next. It's behavioral based. It's based on how you interact with somebody else. And that's why these traits of charm and a charming leader are actually learnable. You can master them, you can practice them, and they can make all the difference in your life. Because if you think about, if you make people feel better about themselves, if you attract people on an ongoing basis, whether that is your boss, you attract your boss more, you attract your team members more, you attract your spouse more, your relevant other more, you attract your children more, and what it really is, what it comes down to is, how do people respond when they see you? Charming leaders are typically when people see you, when they connect with you, they light up. You can see it in their eyes, they smile, because they remember the last time you, how you made them feel. And that's what they remember, that's what they cherish about you, and that's what they look forward to getting more from you. So what are the top 10 traits, and these are skills, of charming people. The first one is charming people are sincere. They are genuine, they are real, and they tell you the truth. They don't hold back, and they're also a little bit raw. So they don't hold back their weaknesses. They don't hold back their vulnerabilities. In fact, they do communicate them, because if you think about it, nobody is perfect. We all have our insecurities. We all have our vulnerabilities. We all have our weaknesses. And once you reveal your weakness, you become more real and people will 
connect with you stronger. The second skill of charming leaders is their confidence. They communicate with confidence, they communicate with clarity, and if you think about it, where does confidence come from? It comes from being competent, because the more competent you are, the more confident you are. The more competent you are in your own life, in your business, the more confidence you exude. Very, very important. The third very important mission critical skill of charming leaders is their attentive. They focus all their attention on the person they're with. They don't, they're not distracted, they don't certainly do not check their watch, they certainly do not check their phone, they ditch their phone, they let it ring, they do not answer the phone when in a meeting with somebody else. They focus all their attention and if you think about charming and charismatic leaders like Nelson Mandela, this is what everybody said. They said, I was, I was feeling I was the one and only person for him. I was the one and only person in the room. And the room was filled with hundreds of others. This is how charming leaders make you. And this is how they become more charming. Then patience. Charming leaders are patient with other people. They give them the space, the room and the time, all the time they need. And charming leaders are positive and uplifting. Now this is very important. You have to really be positive. And the way, best way to be positive is if you learn about the future. If you learn about what is coming, what is possible, why the future will be so much better or can be so much better with the technology that's coming. And obviously it all depends on the future of leadership, on leadership. And I invite you to go to thefutureleadership.com where you can learn about the possibilities of the future. And that alone will make you an inspiring person. If you can hold out hope, if you can hold out a better vision, and if you can hold out a better world for the next generation. And then the sixth skill of charming people is that they are people's, a people's person. And they pass what is called the waiter's test. So when they're in public, they engage with others. They don't stand in a corner. They are almost the light of the group, the light of the event. And when I say they pass the waiter's test, people will notice how you treat people that are at a lower level in society than you. How do you treat the waiter? How do you treat the petrol attendant? How do you treat the shop attendant? Do you treat it with kindness or do you express your supposed superiority? Now the last four of the top ten are do not be judgmental. Charming leaders do not pass judgment. This is very important. Remember, we are all incredibly fragile. The human being emotionally is a fragile human being. We continuously look for what's wrong and we've been trained to look for what's wrong in others and ourselves. In fact, that's what advertising is all about. Advertising is trying to indoctrinate you into believing that you have a need you don't really have, that you are less than. And in fact, research has shown us that only 2% of women feel they are beautiful, they're truly beautiful, because of all the messaging that the cosmetics industry has fed them over time. The stereotypes of what it takes to be a beautiful woman and the stereotypes of what you have to do to become a beautiful woman. Critically important, do not pass judgment. Accept people as they are. Do not make them feel less. And number seven is you have to be interested, genuinely interested in other people and you have to be inquisitive so when you listen you have to listen actively you have to listen for the golden threads when people tell you their story you have to help them find the golden threads so you have to ask questions you have to become immersed in their story in fact once somebody told me their life story over three hours and the reason that why it took three hours is that i kept i kept looking for that golden thread and at the end of the three hours, we both fell in love. And research has shown us that when you look somebody into their eyes for two minutes and you speak to them and you listen actively and you keep that eye contact, a feeling of love will be generated. The eighth critical trait of charming leaders is to, they don't try to seek unnecessary 
attention. They don't try to make themselves feel better or look better. And they don't seek, they're not attention seekers. In fact, you have to be careful that you are not an attention seeker because that communicates that clearly there's something missing that you need that attention because you are insecure. Again, you want to come across and be a confident person and grounded. You have to be grounded in your own and to be grounded you have to understand your purpose, you have to understand what's driving you, you have to have that vision for you and for others and you have to be very clear about what it is that you contribute to the well-being of others. Number nine is that you have to have an open mind, which means you have to get out of your head, you have to get into others. When you walk the street, when you go into a meeting, get out of your head, keep an open mind and be open-minded about others. Allow them their foibles, allow them their weaknesses and do not, and this is probably number 10 for now, do not focus on the negative. Do not get involved in whinging, 